Our opening hymn is Sing Praise to the Father. It's different words to the tune of To God Be the Glory. Please stand. Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful day. Thank you for another week of life. Uh, Lord, we're so thankful that you gave us this opportunity to come here and worship you. Uh, I ask that you join us in worshiping you. Uh, in your name I pray, amen. I'd like to give you all a warm welcome to the Piedmont Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are so happy that you are here. Let's continue worshiping God. Okay. Well, good morning. My husband would say, it's a beautiful morning, the sun's shining, I don't have to shovel snow, da-da-da-da-da. That's how he always starts that conversation. But it is a nice morning, it's full of sun. We're at church, heat's on, lights are on. Do you wonder when you look at your bulletin and it says we're in the red, how it is that the lights are on, that the heat's on, that we still have someone to print the bulletin. Does that, does that ever cross your mind that those two don't match? Well, it does mine. <clears throat> there are some reasons for that. First of all, there are people who support church expense. 
And we're thankful for those people. Can I hear an amen? amen. All right. We also have people in positions who are very responsible and they're careful about how they use money. And they don't go out and spend money that we don't have. <laughs> and I'm thankful for that. I really don't like irresponsible spenders. We also have something that when you were a kid, your mother might have had. Did your mother have money that she tucked away? She had grocery money and she didn't spend it all, so she took that money and she put it somewhere, maybe in a jar or someplace. So she always had this little fund just in case you needed something for school or there was something that was an emergency and she had a little money to fall back on. I remember those times because when I was little, money was very, very tight and my mother didn't work. And she often had a little collection of money that she had saved diligently. One of her favorite phrases, which I truly despise, is this costs $50 this costs ten dollars and this is just as good as this i used to hate that <laughs> and i have never said that to my children well we have a reserve fund at church we do not have tons of money in the reserve fund but if we are short um can you come and help me Sorry, I didn't, I, sometimes God needs to give us a third hand. Oh, and I forgot your foot. Oh, I'm so sorry. He's going to do it. Okay, you're going to be my. All right. Sometimes, this is our fun. Sometimes we have to dip into the fun, so tear a piece off. A big piece. We'll be here all day. <laughs> all right. So we have to, so. Our fund is now what? Smaller. This fund is refreshed by the interest we earn on things like CDs. Do you know how much money that is? Not much. Not much. That's why we have apartments and not CDs. <laughs> so if, you, if we have an emergency, we have to bite in there again, and more is gone. So now look at what we have. Very little, less than half. This is why I get concerned, because there can always be an emergency, and you don't want us to go without heat for six weeks while we find money enough to pay cash for a furnace. Now, in the case of bigger staffs, they probably would just put it in and bill us. But lots of people don't get a furnace until they have cash in hand. And my concern is, I want to thank you very much. You're a very good helper. <laughs> I don't want to see the reserve fund disappear, which is why I ask you that I could please not wear a red dress again for a while. <clears throat> I get tired of red dresses. And there's a real, even though we have heat and lights and all of that, we really need to support what church expense provides. And I hope that you can find it in your wallet and your heart to support church expense. Can you all pray with me now, please? Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the wonderful opportunity we have to pray in a warm, spacious, beautiful building where we can gather and sing praises to you. Be with us today. 
Help us to have a good Sabbath experience. Amen. Thank you for blessing us with that. Have you been blessed by the choir today? I noticed as I was listening to the children's story about the Boys and Girls Club that with the choir, here sits all the men, and here sits all the ladies. But isn't it awesome that they come together to do ministry and make a beautiful sound? Amen? That's what it's all about. Thank you again, Pastor Caitlin, for reminding us how we can be part of God's kingdom. I got a few announcements for you. There is a lot going on, so I'm going to have to talk super fast, and you're going to have to listen even faster. So, first announcement. Hear me real good on this. If you happen to get a text message from me, or an email, or a phone call from me or Pastor Caitlin requesting funds or gift cards or anything like that, Please look closely at that text or email because it is not from us. If you didn't hear, there was a scammer out there who was pretending to be me, texting church members, emailing church members, asking for gift cards and things, and that is never, ever what I'm going to do. I'm not going to solicit funds that way. We don't do that here. So if that ever happens, look close. It didn't come from my phone number. It didn't come from my email. It came from... Reverend Father email or something, uh, which is not me. <laughs> so please, always look close. Be aware of scammers. The uh, authorities told me that 25% of these scams actually work. So be careful, be on guard, and always call, ask questions. Don't give out your uh, information, your funds. We don't want that to happen. So and if you didn't know, I was on the news for all this and got to talk to the police. So it's been an interesting week. Uh, but what else is going on tonight? We have soup supper that's going to be happening here at the church at 6 p.m. Just a great time to come together, bring a little food with you. Uh, we eat together. We play games and sing. It's just a wonderful way to end out the Sabbath. That'll be tonight at 6. Uh, other things that are going on. Oh, coming up next Friday. Linda, come up and tell us what is happening next Friday. We have a very, very... Special Vespers. Yes. Uh, next Friday night. Not on. Let's try yeah, this one down. Loud. Let's try this one down here. The children's story, Mike. Let's see if this one will work. Give that one a whirl. Hello? There you go. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, next Friday is our Vespers night at 7 p.m. 
And we're going to have a special Vespers. Mary Pookie is turning 95 this month. And I was thinking, what do you give Mary Pookie, who's turning 95? I have no idea. But Mary loves, loves, loves music, loves to sing, loves to play. So I thought, what would be better than have a special old-fashioned family Vespers, sundown Vespers, to bring in uh, her birthday and the Vespers. Pastor's going to do a devotional, and we're just going to sing hymns. And I want anybody who comes to bring their instruments. I would just love to have a full sound. So whatever you play, bring it with you and come sing with us for an hour next Friday at 7 and celebrate Mary's birthday. Thank you very much, Linda. That will be a very, very special night. A few other things that are happening. Our cooking, family cooking adventure is still happening on Sundays. I think it starts at 4 o'clock. And you can be a part of that. Even if you haven't signed up in the past, you still can. If you're interested, uh, if you've got questions, uh, you can meet Betty Jacobs out in the foyer, and she can give you all the details about that. But some wonderful food being made there, excellent recipes. You will be very blessed if you come and enjoy that. I uh, also want to let you know from the women's ministries, they are calling all crafters to be here tomorrow, I think that is, if I'm right. Tomorrow they're going to be crafting, getting ready to make some Mother's Day gifts. So 1 o'clock, gathering place. If you've got crafty skills, be here and help out with that. Uh, also, we have the Journey to the Cross that's coming this Easter. It's going to be on April 11th. And we're still looking for a few actors to be a part of that. Now, if you want to be a part of telling the story of Jesus, and you're like, I don't know if I can learn a lot of lines, we have lots of lines, positions. We have roles that are just a few lines, and we have roles that have zero lines. So if you'd like to be a part, you can be a part of the journey to the cross and help tell that amazing story of Jesus and his love. Let's see. Rich Jacobs has something to share. And he's going to tell us about religious liberty, yes? Yes, that's right. Uh, I'll be sending in the names uh, of those of you who want uh, religious liberty, $6 for a whole year. And so uh, I'll be here Tuesday night for Thunder of the Holy Land, Wednesday night at uh, prayer meeting. So if you, or you can just give me a call, our phone number's in the directory. And if you want to be uh, uh, have uh, religious liberty sent to you, in a uh, uh, just a, a brief uh, aspect here, we can kind of see the I don't know, the drum beats in the background here in our nation. Here, there's many things going on. Um, for example, Vice President uh, Pence's wife she took a part-time job in a Christian school. And uh, there was a lot of, quote, outrage because she did this. Other situations are uh, Christian physicians who uh, uh, will not perform certain types of surgeries. Uh, adults can probably kind of figure this out. And then they're being called evil. And uh, this, is, this is the kind of state of the country that we live in. In this article here, the cultimary cultimative effect of these campaigns of legal and social harassment will be something akin to the English penal laws and test acts, the very laws that the American founders wanted to escape. Those laws threaten employment and restricted political action of those dissenters who could not endorse the established opinions of the state. And the pressure they bring to bear will be a major test for faith for Christians themselves. So as we continue to look upon our country, upon our world, you know, we just need to have continue faith in the Lord that God will bring us through these trying days. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Rich. We need to protect religious liberty for everyone. Amen. All right, just a couple more announcements. Lily, come up here and tell us about the exciting event that took place from Pathfinders and tell everybody about it. Good morning, church family. Okay, my name is Lily Young, for anyone who doesn't know me. And on the behalf of our Pathfinder Club, the, the Piedmont Park Thunderbirds, I'd like to thank you for coming and for supporting our fundraise, our Leap Year Extravaganza. We had a good turnout, sold close to 40 pizzas, and, and thank you, Hugh, for hosting our epic family feud-type battle. And, um, and we also crowned the cookie champion. 
for who, for who made the best cookies. And um, thank you for your ongoing support, church family. All right, thank you very much, Lily. We appreciate our Pathfinders, and thank you so much for helping them. Uh, one more announcement was one that I forgot last week. I was so excited about our baptism that we had. Dylan was baptized last week, and I got so excited I forgot to vote him into membership here at the church. And Dylan is here. I think he's in the back, right? I saw him earlier. He's waving at me. We got to make this official. We want Dylan to be part of our church family officially. So is there a motion to accept Dylan? I see a hand there, that, and Barbara, I'm going to take that as a second. Now, Dylan, take a good look. I want you to see all these hands. All those in favor of Dylan being a part of the Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church, let's see those hands. Amen, amen. Any opposed? Thank you very much, Dylan. We have finally made it official. Thank you for being patient with me, Dylan. And we are so thrilled uh, for his decision to be a part of our family. If you are looking for a church family, there are cards in the pews, and you can fill that out if you want to transfer your membership or if you want to study to be a part of this church. We will certainly be excited to be a part of that. You can give that card to me. Now, I have something very special that we get to be a part of. I need baby Marlon to come up and join me up here. And if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and bring mom and dad with you. And we have a special family here. And I want to introduce this family to everybody. So... Marlon, come on up here and bring Dad with you and Mom, Mara Joy and Marlon. Come on up here, guys. Well, he is growing, aren't you, buddy? You're getting big. Hello. We have a very special family here that has been blessed, been blessed with a wonderful gift, a wonderful gift of a special little boy. And that's what I want to talk to you guys about, is gifts. Now, sometimes we get a gift. Have you ever gotten a gift at Christmas time and you were so excited for it on December 25th? But then that gift that you got on December 25th, come June 25th, you've kind of forgotten all about it, right? It's not that special anymore. Well, the gift that God gives to us is a gift that continues to change and to grow and develop. And so this gift that God gives is always special. And the Bible actually talks about this in the book of James, James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So you hold in your arms one of the most precious gifts that God has ever given to, not just to you guys, but to planet Earth because there is no one just like him. And so God has given you this precious gift, and children are gifts. Amen, church family? And I know sometimes it's very easy to think of kids as gifts when, you know, we're holding them and they're nice and quiet and peaceful, as he is right now. But there are other times that come, aren't there? Sometimes in the middle of the night where they're not as peaceful as you would like. They're still gifts then, aren't they? And then years from now, when they get older and they become teenagers and they have opinions of their own, <laughs> let me tell you, they're still gifts. They're still precious. They're still that perfect gift that God has given from above. You will learn about God and His love for you so much just from Him being in this world. And I'm sure you probably have already. It's been a fun adventure and wonderful adventure ahead for you as well. But you're here today to dedicate your lives and to dedicate this precious son to the Lord and to ask his blessing. So we're going to do that now. He's very content, but I'm going to try to hold him and see if he's still content. <laughs> oh, I know Pastor Michael's hands get cold when he's talking up front, but we'll keep an eye on mom and dad and make sure they're good. Look at all those people out there. Church family, will you pray with us? Because this is a dedication for all of us to be a part of his life. Heavenly Father, Lord, this is a little one that has been prayed over, prayed about, and longed for, and you have given him. So, Lord, we are so grateful for this precious baby. We ask for your blessing to be on Marlon, to help him to grow, Lord, 
to be the young man you want him to be. Lord, there are so many things that his mom and dad are going to teach him, but the best thing they can teach him is that there is a God in heaven who loves him and who wants to live forever with him. So, Lord, we put him in your hands now, and we ask for your blessing that you will help him to know you and to love you all the days of his life. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, amen. Thank you. He's pretty content right here. This, we could hang out the whole service, you know, if you wanted to. All right, we're going to let him go back to, to Dad here. And we have a certificate for you guys showing that Marlon was dedicated to the Lord here at the Piedmont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church on March 7th. We are so happy for you guys, and I'll let you have that. God bless you both. You're welcome. You're welcome. And church family, I'd like to encourage you to be praying for our families with little ones. It is not an easy journey being mom and dad, and so we as a church support our families. And now I'd like to invite our singers, our choir to come back up, and let's continue our praise of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. Thank you, everyone. We'd like to invite you to stand and join us as we sing As the Deer. For us this morning will be Father, I adore you in a three part round. So, this half of the sanctuary, your group one, this half, your group two, and balcony, your group three. I will cue you when it's time to come in. And so, we'll just sing that all the way through. Everybody, repeat the last phrase, how I love you, until everybody finishes together.
Let us kneel. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father, we ask for your guidance, your direction today. We ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us as we listen to your word given by Pastor Morton. Father, we come with physical ailments, emotional. We come with spiritual needs, Father. We ask that you come, lift us up into your kingdom so that we can cope with the world's distress. Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for loving us. Please be with all those that are sick in the bulletin, those that are hurting. Father, we ask that you come be in this place as we worship you today, as we come to you for guidance and direction in all of our flaws and imperfections. Please help us to overcome these obstacles that we have in our life. We thank you so much for the baby dedication. I ask that you be with that baby's parents, that you give them the guidance and the directions they need into developing a baby for your kingdom. Father, we love you, and we thank you for loving us. In your name, amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath to all. Hi. Today's scripture reading can be found in Luke chapter 14, verses 16 through 17. I invite you to look in your Bible if you have one. If not, it will be on the screen. Luke chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. And it says, But he said to him, A man was given a big dinner, and he invited many. And at that dinner hour, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. May the Lord bless his word. Thank you, Hasiel, for reading that. Happy Sabbath. How are you guys this morning? Good? Blessed? Oh, I, I love the choir. It, it brings back so many memories. I did choir for many years, and I miss it. <laughs> um, let's, let's pray before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this wonderful day. Thank you that we're here worshiping you. Lord, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit. May it be your words, not mine. In your name I pray. Amen. So I was able to sit at uh, adult Sabbath school this time around, and I noticed something. You guys are going through the book of Daniel. Interestingly, I'm also going to be preaching on this. So I strongly believe that this message needs to be heard. If it's something that's being repeated, it means that someone needs to hear it. Today at 6, I believe, there's going to be a soup supper, right? Everyone is invited. Uh, At my graduation uh, of high school, I was really excited. I mean, this is a big milestone. Uh, I invited all of my family. And in case you didn't know, Hispanics have a big family. And so I invited my entire family, which is about, I don't know, 60 in total on both sides. And so I invited all of them to my graduation, but only a few came. And I was really sad and disappointed. 
And in the Bible, we have Luke, in Luke chapter 14, we have a certain man. Uh, this parable can also be found in Matthew chapter 22. So I'm going to mix those two stories together because it's the same parable. So just a little background of what's going on. Jesus had gone to a dinner or a meal that he was invited to with the Pharisees. And he, he talks, I mean, he heals someone on the Sabbath, and then they're like, oh, you know, why, what are you doing? Is that, that's, you shouldn't be doing that on the Sabbath. And then he talks about a parable, about a wedding feast. And then he keeps going, and we get to chapter 15. Uh, 14, verse 16. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many. Just as I invited my entire family, this guy, if you look in Matthew 22, it was a rich king. Okay? It was a certain man. He invited many. And when the time came that the food was ready, that the feast was prepared, he said to his servants, Go. I already set the invitations, but just go and remind them. So that's what he did. The servants go. They go to the first person. Hey, you're invited. Come, the feast is ready. And the response that he gets, he says, I just bought, in verse 18, I just bought a piece of ground, and I must go and see it. I ask, to have, I ask you to have me excused. Okay? He bought something. He chose that over this invitation. If you were invited by your boss, or if you were invited by the president, you would go, right? <laughs> another guy he had just bought a house a new car well it says in the bible he used he bought oxen and he wanted to use them so i'm just translating it to now he just bought a new house a new car and he was busy with all the paperwork and all you know trying his new car and seeing how fast it goes so he said i i can't make it another group this person said, oh, I just got married. I'm going on my honeymoon. Peace. I'm out. Don't count me in. But in Matthew 22, we have a fourth group. This group didn't even want to hear it. They killed the servants. Now, as I was doing some research into this, I was reading a commentary, and it said, all these excuses had one thing in common. And each present good is esteemed above the heavenly offer. In other words, temporal good is valued higher than the spiritual. Three excuses. One, he bought, a, bought land, so earthly goods. The attraction of property of different kinds, the abs absorbing delight of possessing earthly goods. Has that ever happened? Where we put things above what God has called us to do. The second Excuse, the occupations of business, the pleasure of increasing the store, of adding coin to coin or field to field, increasing your pay, has that ever led you far from Christ? Putting your job, putting your finances above God. The third thing, he had just gotten married. Social ties, whether at home or abroad, 
whether in general society or in the home circle, for even if in the latter case it is too possible for family and domestic interests so completely to fill the heart as to leave no room for higher and more unselfish aims. The rich man, this king, the guy who invited lots of people, got angry, and he said, go kill them, go destroy them, destroy their houses. And that's exactly what happened. They come back, and, and the king, he tells the servants, go and invite whoever you come across. Go into the streets, go to the poor, the blind, the lame, the sick. They did that, invited, and they all came. But the servant said, there's still more room. Can you believe that? There's still more room. And so he's like, okay. Go out of that city. And go into the countryside. The highways, the hedges. And invite whoever you come across. So as I said, I, I was listening. As I was doing all of this, Daniel 9 came to mind. And I heard Virgil explaining the 70-week prophecy. So since you guys are familiar with the 70-week prophecy, we're just going to hit the key points, okay? The 70-week prophecy can be found in Daniel 9, if you'd like to turn there with me. Daniel 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for the holy city to finish the transgression, to make end of sin, to make re uh, reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in, in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy one. Okay, seventy weeks. There we have it. And now, he's about, the, the angel, he's about to break it down. There are two things that we need to understand when interpreting Bible prophecy. One, literal time periods are often symbols of much longer time period. A 24-hour day is what? A year. How do we know that? When I was doing my Bible study this past Wednesday, I told the person I was telling or doing the Bible study that for everything that we believe, we need to have what? Biblical evidence, right? So where do we get that the year is, or one day is a year? It's found in Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6. There's also another verse, Numbers 14, 34. So that's point number one in understanding biblical prophecy. Number two, the Jewish year has 360 days, unlike ours, which is 365, except for this year. This is an odd year. Applying those two keys, we realize 70 weeks is not seven literal weeks. It's what? 70 Yes, 70 times 7, which equals 490 days or years. A little, little confusing, but with the Bible we can decipher that in a little bit of math. I thought I was done doing math after finishing my second class of college algebra. I thought I was done. So the angel in verse 25 gives Daniel two numbers. He says seven weeks and 62 weeks, or 62 plus 7, 69. Okay. The first 69 weeks started when what? What happened? When did, how did, when did the 70 weeks start? The decree to what? To build Jerusalem. And when was that given, you might ask? The decree described in Ezra 7, 13 through 26, was sent out by the Persian king 
Artaxerxes in the year what? 457 B.C. Now, if you were to look and read at Ezra, you'd see that there are many, many decrees. But there's only one that gives the command to rebuild and restore Jerusalem. The others talk about the temple. Okay. Seven weeks would be to rebuild the Jerusalem, or the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And the 62 weeks is explained in the next verse. Let's go to Daniel 9, 26. Daniel 9, 26. And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be what? Cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Okay. Sometime after the 62 weeks, the Messiah would be what? Cut off. This is a reference to Christ's death on the cross. Let's also keep in mind that the decree was given in B.C., okay? And that when we go down to 1 B.C., there is no year zero, okay? It would be what? 1 A.D. Okay, Daniel 9, 27. Let's keep reading. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week, but in the middle of the week he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. Okay. When did the 69 weeks end? According to prophecy, according to history, it ended in 27 A.D. What happened in 27 A.D.? The baptism of Jesus. That's what's what's it called? Um, the the prophecy says that in the middle of that week, the seven years from 27 to 34 A.D. History shows us. that Jesus died in 31 AD. And I needed my fingers for this. I was like, okay, how is this in the middle? So let's just do that, okay? The 27 AD, okay? 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then I looked, and I was like, oh, shoot. This pinky's right in the middle. So that helped me. I don't know. It's just something that... I need visual aid to learn. But that was exactly in the middle, just as prophecy predicted it. The beginning of verse 27 says, Then he shall confirm the covenant for many with one week. Okay. What does this refer to? The confirming of a covenant. This, refer, this refers to the period of time Jesus focused his efforts primarily on the people of who? The Jews, the people of Israel. But with the stoning of Stephen, in what year? 34 A.D. The gospel message now went as well to who? The Gentiles, the non-Jews. According to the Jews, who were the Gentiles? The scum of the earth. Thus ending the 70 week prophecy. So as I'm reading here in Luke, Luke 14, as I'm reading, and I, after doing some research into it, I'm like, wait, this is the same story. This is what Daniel was talking about. So Jesus here is not only telling a parable, He's prophesying and repeating Daniel. Am I wrong? God had sent his prophets. God had sent his servants to ready them, to get the Israelites ready for Jesus. And the Israelites killed those prophets. God sent Jesus. And what did they do? They killed him. God sent Stephen, and what did they do? Killed him too. In 
In 70 AD, the Romans overtook and, and completely destroyed Jerusalem. But in 34 AD, this marked, like I said, the end of the 70-week prophecy where, what happened? Stephen was stoned, and that marked that the gospel was now to be spread to everyone else. Paul says in Acts 13, 46, he says, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you, but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to who? The Gentiles. Verse 49, And the word of the Lord was being spread throughout the whole region. This invitation was for them. But now, it is for you. You have been invited. Two things. You have been invited to be a guest in the heavenly kingdom. And the second thing, you have been invited to invite others to this guest, I mean, to this feast. And I understand that there are many distractions in life. We may come up with excuses, but let me tell you, this invitation needs to be accepted. My dad, for the longest time, rejected the idea of Jesus. So much that he fled to Ohio. I'm from California. We fled. We left my family because they were all be becoming Christians. And he hated it. So he went to Ohio. There in Ohio, God wouldn't leave him alone. He started having dreams, and these vivid dreams of his entire family going up to heaven, the second coming, going up to heaven, and he was just there on earth. He wasn't going in anywhere. He didn't know anything about Revelation. He didn't know anything about Ellen White's uh, visions. This was all in his dream. Jesus was telling him a message. He was saying, you need to accept me. Your family is going. Do you want to be stuck here? Please, come. It wasn't after my surgery that he gave himself fully to Christ. And to this day, he has not stopped sharing the word. We are his guests. We are his servants. As guests, accept the invitation to be with Christ. It doesn't get easier, but let me tell you, it gets better. We have this hope. What is this hope? That Jesus, who? Jesus is coming back. Amen? As servants, we are called to minister to those around you. Since we are called to serve, let's serve with our hearts. To the poor, to the blind, to the sick, to the lame, to the ones on the street, to the one sitting next to you, to your child, to your, ki uh, to your spouse, and to your family. This is our mission. We are all invited. No discrimination, just like Pastor Caitlin said. We're all going to be one with Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this invitation. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for accepting us for who we are. Lord, we ask that you Fill our hearts, and may we be able to share your word. Give us that strength. In your name I pray, amen. Let's stand together and sing, I am thine, O Lord. <laughs> Oh, 
thy voice and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where with the words of Jesus. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. Amen.